Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the multiplication principle for counting. Now, in probability, we're interested in these counting principles or counting methods to help us figure out the number of ways that a certain process or procedure or experiment can occur so we can figure out the total number of outcomes in a sample space or to figure out the total number of ways that a certain event could occur. Now, in a lot of our basic probability and statistics courses, a lot of the examples involve dice or they involve flipping a coin or pulling a marble from a bag of marbles or pulling a card from a deck of cards. So before we get into this formal discussion of the multiplication principle, let's first talk about a deck of cards. Now, a standard deck of 52 playing cards has 52 total cards. 26 are red and 26 are black. So half of the cards are red, half of them are black. You can also see from the picture here that you can group the cards into four equal groups or what we call suits. We have the clubs, we have the diamonds, we have the hearts, and we have the spades. And you can also see from the picture that 26 red cards are the diamonds and hearts and 26 black cards are the clubs and the spades. Now for each of these suits here then there are 13 total cards. You'll have cards numbered from 2 all the way up to 10. You'll have cards called the face cards, the jack, queen, and king, and they're called the face cards because there are faces on the cards. And then for each suit there's also an ace for a total of 13 cards per suit. Now I wanted to go over the components of a deck of cards, the counts of a deck of cards, to illustrate that sometimes counting things is very easy. You can just use your fingers and toes. But later on, when we get into more advanced topics, counting isn't going to be as easy as just counting on your fingers and toes. If I were interested in the total number of ways that I could select three cards, you don't want to use your fingers and toes because you're going to be at it for a while. Another reason why I wanted to go over these counts is because not everyone is familiar with the components of a standard deck of playing cards. Just in the same way that I wouldn't expect you to know all the pictures and counts of Mahjong tiles, so would I not necessarily expect all of you to understand what all the components of decks of cards would be. So now that we've seen these counts, we can use these to help find more complicated processes or experiments involving decks of cards, like randomly selecting three cards from a pool of cards. Now, in a way, you could think of our deck of cards as our population, the population of playing cards. And what we're going to do is randomly sample three cards at a time. We're going to pick them one at a time. But before we start selecting cards, we need to agree if that's going to occur with replacement or without replacement. If I select three cards one at a time, or sample three cards one at a time with replacement, that means when I pick a card and look at it, I'm going to put that back into the population, put it back into my deck of cards, and potentially select it again. That's the concept of sampling with replacement. If I sample my cards without replacement now, I'm going to pick my cards one at a time. And when I pick a card out, I'm going to take a look at it. I'm going to expect it. And then I'm going to discard it. I'm not going to put it back into the population, which eliminates the possibility that I could potentially pick it again when I start sampling more cards from my deck of cards. And that's the idea of without replacement. A lot of times we like to sample with replacement because it imposes what we call independent events as part of our probabilities. That's something that's going to be discussed a little later. But a number of times we also like to sample without replacement because we just don't want to duplicate results, especially when you know telephone people up and getting you know responses to survey questions. Now back to our problem with the cards. If I'm interested now in sampling three cards at a time from a deck of cards where I'm going to pull these cards out one at a time. One of the things I'm going to be interested in is 
how many possible ways can this occur? How many possible three card hands can I pull out through, you know, pulling a card one at a time for three cards? In order to figure this out, we're going to utilize something called the multiplication principle for counting. And this is much worse sounding than it is in practice. But the multiplication principle for counting says this. Suppose we have a sequence of choices to make, a sequence of n choices, like three. Or maybe this is a process that involves multiple steps. So we have a sequence of maybe steps to perform. If we know the number of ways that the first choice can be made, and we know the number of ways that the second choice can be made, so forth and so on, and we know the total number of ways that the final choice can be made, then the total number of ways to make that sequence of choices is just to multiply the total number of ways to make each choice. Yes, it sounds much worse than it is in application, but let's use this to illustrate the total number of ways that we can select three cards. So let's start first by randomly sampling three cards with replacement. So we're going to select three cards one at a time from a deck of cards, and we're going to do this selection randomly with replacement. So we're going to select our first card, inspect it, put it back into the deck, randomly select our second card, inspect it, put it back into the deck, and then select a third card, inspect it, and put it back into the deck. Now, if I'm trying to figure out the total number of ways that this three card selection can occur, right, where this is the first card, this is the second card, or this is the third card, then the total number of ways that the first card can occur, the total number of cards to choose from is 52. We could get any one of 52 total cards for the first card. Now, we look at that first card, put it back into the deck, and then select, at random, the second card, which could still occur 52 possible ways. Because that first card we chose was put back in the deck, we could potentially pick it again, which leaves us again with still 52 cards. Now, we take that second card, put it back into the deck, and then select, at random, the third card, which is still 52. Now, what the multiplication principle says is this. I have three cards to choose from, to select, sorry, not to choose from. And then I know the number of ways that each card can occur, or the number of ways that each choice could be made. And so the total number of ways I can select these three cards, one at a time with replacement, is just to multiply the number of ways that each card can be chosen. So 52 times 52 times 52 is 140,608. There are 140,608 ways to select three cards one at a time with replacement. Now, I'm selecting these three cards one at a time with replacement, which means I'm replacing it after each card, and I'm going to stop at three. That's a tiny bit different than actually sampling three cards with replacement, which means I would take three cards out, look at them, and then put those three cards back, and then the next sample could still involve cards that I've already drawn. But that's just a very small distinction. For purposes of, the, you know, of this example, the multiplication principle, we're just going to talk about pulling one card at a time and replacing it with you know, every pull until I get three cards. Now, suppose I want to do this without replacement. Once again, I'm going to select three cards. And after each card, I'm going to discard the card so not to potentially sample it again. So here's my first card, here's my second card, and here's my third card. Now, once again, I select my first card, and that can occur in any one of 52 possible ways. I look at the first card, and then I put it aside so that I don't potentially select it again. That means when I get to my second card now, there are only 51 ways that next card can be pulled because there's only 51 cards left. I look at the second card now, and I discard it so I don't potentially select it again, which leaves 50 cards remaining. 
And that's the total number of ways that I can select the third card. Now, using the multiplication principle, the total number of ways I can perform this sequence of steps, or number of ways I can make the sequence of choices, is just to multiply the number of ways each step can occur. So 52 times 51 times 50 gives me 132,600. And that's the total number of ways I can pick one card at a time without replacement. Now, let's apply this to a slightly more advanced example. How many ways can we get a three of a kind? Meaning, I get the same card, but maybe different suits. Right? How many ways can we get a three of a kind? Like a king and a king and a king? or a six and a six and a six, or maybe like a four and a four and a four. When I select three cards at random, one at a time, without replacement. So let's think about this. Here are my three cards again. <laughs> one at a time. And this is my first card, this is my second card, and this is my third card. Now, I select my first card. And I'm interested in getting a three of a kind. So at this point, we haven't really established a three of what kind, just a three of a kind. So there are still 52 possible ways that we can select the first of a three of a kind. Now we look at the card, and since we're doing this without replacement, we observe what card it is because now the remaining two choices are sort of locked into a specific card. So we discard that first card. And say it's like the Ace of Hearts. Now, the remaining two cards, we need to get Aces. But there are only 51 cards left. But even more importantly is this. We want three cards that are three of a kind. Like an Ace and an Ace and an Ace. We've already selected one Ace and we've discarded it. Now, for the second card, in order to get a three of a kind, it has to be one of the three remaining aces. So we pull that card out. It's an ace. And we discard it so we don't potentially select it again. Now the third card, since we want a three of a kind, also has to be an ace. One of the two remaining aces. So if I want to figure out how many ways can I get a three of a kind, we just multiply the total number of ways to make each choice. So 52 times 3 times 2 is 312. And some of you might be saying, well, wait a second. If we want three of a, you know, if we want three aces, that means this should be 4 times 3 times 2. But this is it. We're not just talking about three aces, but three of a kind of any card. So to start with, it can be any of the 52 cards. But now that limits then, based on what the first card is, to the three, me three remaining of the same type and two for the third to give you 312. And now you might be wondering, well, why would I use something like this? Well, the reason why is to calculate probabilities. Because if I'm interested in the likelihood now, the probability of getting a three of a kind when selecting three cards at random without replacement, we know that there are 132,600 ways that we can select three cards without replacement. And we know there are 312 ways to get a three of a kind. And once we have that gem of information, we can perform the arithmetic and figure out, all right, when I perform that division, 312 out of 132,600 possible ways to get three cards at random without replacement gives me a likelihood of approximately 0 0.00235, right? Which is approximately what? About 0.235%. So not terribly likely, but that's one of the reasons why we use the multiplication principle, because it allows us to be able to figure out the total number of ways of doing things 
where that total is very, very large.